I was first introduced to creme brulee when I went to a small cafe in the college town where I used to work. Around that same time, my parents had been sending me magazines when they were done with them from Cook's Illustrated in Cook's Country. And it just so happened that there was a creme brulee recipe. At first, it seemed really challenging and I didn't think I would be able to do it. But all of a sudden, I had made a luscious creme brulee. In this video, I wanna show you that it's not as hard as it looks to make cardamom vanilla creme brulee dessert. And you can make it too. You really should. It's amazing. Welcome to Master of Chemistry, where motherhood and science collide. In my Joyful Foods series, I share with you how to make some of my favorite treats, desserts, meals, and dishes to bring a little bit of flavor and joy to your life. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this and check out my channel page for more videos as well as how to's, life hacks, and motherhood stories that connect to science. A few notes I wanna share with you before I get started. The recipe that I started that helped me get into making creme brulee comes from Cook's Illustrated publication. I still use it today, but over the years, I have made mistakes. I've put in half of the ingredients, but kept the rest the same completely just by mistake. I've tried different flavors. I've forgotten to strain the mixture, which you got to make sure to do that or you end up with this egg, scrambly egg situation. And so overall, I've done a lot of trial and error and found ways to make the recipe my own. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. What I use in my recipe and the supplies I use and my process, I share in the video description, but I want to give full credit to the Cook's Illustrated magazine for the process and for the basic ingredients and original recipe, which I've also linked in my video description. The last thing I wanna show you is just how often I've used this recipe. I don't know how well this shows up in the video, but um, there's lots of spills and food particles on these pages because I've used it so much. So in my recipe, you're going to need two cups of heavy whipping cream, six eggs, even though the container show, shows more than six eggs, that was just for, you know, making it look pretty, uh, two thirds cup of sugar. And then I use, I added this to the recipe. I use cardamom seeds because I have those on hand. I didn't have vanilla pod um, in their seeds. So I uh, remove the seeds from the seed pod and then use those for flavoring. You also will need a pinch of salt. The last thing that you're going to need is for the caramelization um, that you will be completing as the last step after you have baked your creme brulee. So you're going to need either three quarter cup of um, granulated sugar or terminado sugar. Turbinado sugar um, has larger particles, larger crystals. I've used both because I don't always and didn't always have turbinado sugar on hand. And one of the items I forgot in my original setup was liquid vanilla. You'll need a teaspoon of that. Because I didn't get all the materials that you need in the original setup, I wanna make sure to share those now. You're gonna need a medium saucepan. You're gonna need three containers for dealing with processing your eggs. One for the egg yolks, one for the egg whites, and one for the egg shells. You're gonna need a strainer, a mixing bowl, and then either a whisk or a fork, depending on the size of your container for your egg yolks. You'll want a rubber spatula or other stirring tool for mixing the mixture in your saucepan. You'll need a one cup measuring cup and a teaspoon. You'll also need a saucepan or tea kettle to boil water in because part of the cooking process includes a water bath with boiling water that is added to it. The water bath setup includes a nine by 13 glass baking dish and a towel which you fold and lay down in the bottom of the dish. And then you will pour boiling water into it. The mixture that will bake in the oven, the creme brulee, can be poured into an eight by eight glass baking dish that fits into the larger glass baking dish, or you can use six ramekins. The water doesn't go into the dishes, just surrounding them in the larger dish. I actually didn't know that these dishes were called ramekins until I first made creme brulee, and I think it was around when I was 26 or 27 years old. So if you didn't know that these are called ramekins, don't feel bad about it. Set the temperature of your oven to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This is optional. 
You don't have to have it, but if you do have it, your creme brulee will be even more amazing because what it does is it helps to create a caramelized outer crust that is just to die for. A butane or propane blowtorch works fine. You can see that I have four containers for my egg processing. If you are grabbing straight out of the egg carton, you would only need three. I make sure that one of my containers has a lid that securely fits because I save the egg whites after separating them to use in other dishes like for breakfast or other desserts. I separate my egg yolks and egg whites by hand. Egg yolks are what you are using for the creme brulee recipe. I just crack the egg open and let the egg whites separate between my fingers. If you have a better method and don't like the nature of touching eggs, then go ahead and use your own version. I have found that this is the fastest method for my life. Next in your saucepan, add 2 thirds cup of granulated sugar and then measure about one cup of the heavy whipping cream. You will use the other one cup later on. I have cardamom spice that is still in its shell and usually open up around four of them and then dump the contents into the saucepan. You need it to get just to boiling, so I set the temperature to around medium heat because if I do it any higher, I end up burning it because I get distracted by my kids or my phone. One of the things I've realized is that I must thrive on chaos. So I say to myself sometimes, Joy, why do you do these things to yourself? Such as when I'm making creme brulee, because I have the extra egg whites and I'm afraid because it's happened, because it's been proven with data, with evidence over and over again, if I put the egg whites into the refrigerator that aren't being used in the creme brulee recipe, that they'll sit there for weeks and then all of a sudden I'll be like, oh yeah, I was supposed to use those for something. So what I'll often do is make the creme brulee, but in the meantime, also be making another recipe like angel food cake or lemon pudding cake so that I make sure that I use those egg whites before they go bad. So I'm usually juggling more than one thing and then I tend to have problems in keeping time and making sure I do things in the correct step, which is one of the reasons I've kind of fell upon um, having the recipe the way I've created it um, based on the original recipe from the magazine is because of the mistakes I make in time management and forgetting to add things when I'm supposed to. All right, let's continue on. The mixture needs to cook on the stove top until it's boiling and you should stir periodically. The point of heating up the mixture and bringing it to a boil is to allow those cardamom seeds to have their flavors diffuse into the mixture. So one of the things that I do with my videos is I talk about science concepts and diffusion is referring to where there's a lot of something high concentration. The flavor is all in the cardamom seeds. We need it to get where there's not very much of it, a low concentration, which would be in the milk and sugar mixture. So heating it up allows for that diffusion to occur. You need to take the saucepan off the heat and allow it to cool for around 15 minutes or for me whenever I happen to get back to it because I probably didn't get the timer set right or forgot to set the timer completely. Not kidding, it happens all the time and it happened during this actual recipe and video making process. More on that later. While waiting for the mixture to cool, you should get your egg yolks processed by mixing them up really well. I had a really small container where I put my egg yolks, so a fork worked best for the mixing process, but if you had a larger container that you put them in, a whisk would work fine too. Once your mixture in the saucepan has cooled, now the rest of the heavy whipping cream, the remaining cup can be poured into the saucepan and stirred with the rest of the mixture. One of the reasons that we cool the mixture first after it has been brought to the boil, and then we add the cool refrigerated heavy whipping cream, the remaining one cup into it, is to get that mixture at a temperature that when you add it to the eggs that you don't accidentally cook the eggs. We do not want the eggs solidifying. We do not want scrambled eggs. Eggs have protein in it, and protein, if you have too much heat, or if you add things like acids or bases and acid like vinegar, you change the structure of the protein. It's known as denaturation. So to avoid that, what we do, we take a cup of the mixture from the saucepan, and then we add it to the eggs by pouring it slowly and stirring the entire time. Then we'll take that tempered egg product, because that's what that process is that we just did, was tempering the eggs getting them so that they don't go to scrambled, but that they're able to be mixed in properly with the mixture. Then we put the egg and creme brulee mixture that was tempered into the original saucepan and mix that completely.
This next part is really important. Don't forget to do it. I have, and then the dessert is kind of chunky. You need to strain the mixture. Put a strainer on top of a mixing bowl and then pour the saucepan mixture into the strainer. The straining will help pick up any of the egg whites that might have been part of it or any chunks or lumps that just happen to be part of um, the eggs or any part of the mixture that you had, as well as getting rid of the cardamom seeds. You don't need that in the final product. One of the things that you can actually do prior to doing the straining process is start boiling some water in a tea kettle or a saucepan. You need one quart of it because what you're going to be doing then with that boiling water is you are going to be placing it into your nine by 13 glass dish that had the towel folded in it. So open up your oven, pull out the baking rack and put your nine by 13 glass dish on it. Pour some of the boiling water into it, about half full. Then you'll place your smaller baking dish or ramekins, whichever you're using, into the water. Then you will pour your creme brulee mixture into the container or containers. If the water isn't already at two thirds height after you put the containers containing the creme brulee mixture into the larger baking dish, then you can pour some more boiling water um, beside it. Being careful not to get boiling water into the creme brulee mixture, but surrounding it until it gets to around that two thirds mark. I set my timer for around 35 minutes, but your oven may bake differently than mine. Keep an eye on it for around 30 minutes or so. The mixture when baked properly should jiggle just a bit when you shake the dish and you don't want the surface to be browned. So I just wanna let you know, I made two batches because I wanted to show you what the creme brulee was like when you put it into a eight by eight baking dish and then compare it to what it looks like in the um, ramekins. But then it turned out to be, on accident, uh, what you shouldn't do, compare and contrast. If you notice in this picture here, the ones in the ramekins are browned on the top and their texture is not right. First of all, I forgot to strain it. And second of all, I didn't have the timer on and they baked for about an hour and a half. We still ate both of them, but the texture... Um, the taste of the second batch that was in the ramekins was not great. The first one was perfect. We're almost done. You're gonna pull the creme brulee out of the oven. You're going to let it sit on a wire rack and cool. Eventually you're gonna put it into the fridge to cool completely. Now here comes the fun part where you get to get out the torch. So you're gonna put either granulated sugar or terminato sugar. We've used both, they work, both work fine. You're gonna sprinkle it evenly along the surface or, um, on top of your creme brulee that you just um, cooled off. And then you're gonna use the, the torch and you're going to heat it until that sugar starts to melt and then it will create a crust, a hard outer crust that will crack when you put your spoon or fork in to eat it. What we prefer to do is after we use the torch, we actually put the creme brulee back into the fridge so that it completely cools again. Because the torch does warm it up and then it doesn't taste as good, we like it when it's cooled and we think that's when it tastes best. So that is how you make cardamom vanilla creme brulee. I'm so glad that I was brave enough to try it so I could show you how to make it and hopefully that'll give you some confidence that you can do this too. And I hope that you do. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and if you've made creme brulee or you have very of this or you try it after watching this video, I'd love to hear how it went and anything that you have to share. Our experiences can teach us so much and I love sharing them with you. Thanks for watching.